Google. Let's go get him again. When you decide to freshen up your brand new sparkly new toy, your new bestseller in your men's line with either a sport, an O, oh, a blue, a light, or even casual life, it's usually a dice game. Most of the time, these fresher takes, they flop. Ferragamo decided to bring on two noses that are vets in the game to give a fresher take on their Womo release. They hit casual life right out of the park find out next Ferragamo you're up to bat Fragrance family, welcome to the Robes OA channel. I'm your host, Mark. This is the end of the road for any fragrance on the Robes OA channel. A review consists of months of testing, and today I'm putting my nose on the house of Ferragamo. And it's one of their flankers of their Womo line called Casual Life, so it's the fresher take. This is the second release of the Womo line following the original back in 2016, which I absolutely love, by the way. Womo came onto the scene in our community, actually received lots of rave reviews, and with their follow-up, they decided to go fresh. Is this gonna work? Well, we're gonna find out. So, as far as the Ferragamo lineup, uh, in the Robes Away channel, I've only reviewed one particular fragrance, and that is F. Purim. I actually really liked it. I did numerous, like, pop the cherries and stuff like that, and I'm working on a few. However, I've never actually reviewed the original Womo, which I probably should get on to that, but uh, obviously I'm reviewing the flanker before I do the original. Um, so I'm currently testing at the moment from the House of Ferragamo, um, F Black, you saw Pop the Cherry months ago, and that is the next in line to be reviewed. I've been testing that one since February 2020, so hopefully we'll see something uh, again from the Ferragamo lineup, most likely in 2021 on this channel. However, there's still a few that I haven't reviewed yet, mostly from this Womo line. I don't own too many Ferragamos, so I still have Womo, obviously the original, which probably should be next. And I just did a Pop the Cherry on Womo's signature, so one of their darker flankers. Um, so you guys can comment below if you wish to do so, and let me know which one you'd like to see next on the Robes Away channel. So if you're new here, Thanks for watching. Hey, subscribe, hit the bell. <laughs> Keep tabs on yours truly. Also, if you don't have enough of me on YouTube, I'm all over social media under my YouTube handle, Robes Await. You can keep tabs on my behind the scenes stuff, including what I'm wearing during the day, night, um, new purchases, and what I'm actually working on for my YouTube channel. Also, of course, I have a Facebook uh, page, but I also have a Facebook group called Fragrance Guru Nation, FGN for short. We're up to 18,000 members in that group where people discuss uh, fragrances, uh, things that are getting discontinued, new releases, uh, people obviously buy, sell, swap, split fragrances, uh, YouTubers post their new videos or link to their channel so you can discover new YouTubers. Great source of information basically all in one hub. So come join us today on FGN. Now pr prior to the review, I'd like to thank my partner in crime, oh good old fragrancex.com for this fragrance, you can utilize my coupon code on their website, which is my YouTube name, Robes08, and you will get 15% off on any purchase, as little or as big as you'd like to do, and it supports me, so thank you so much for utilizing that coupon code. Now let's get into chapter one, scent profile, and we always start scent profile with under the hood. So let's take a look at some stats on Casual Life. It was released back in 2017, uh, Concentrations Eau de Toilette. 
uh, the nose behind this particular release. Uh, it's a double-headed monster, Alberto Marias, which is all over the map. Um, he just pumps out uh, fragrances as much as I pump out fragrance reviews. And uh, of course, uh, Guishar, um, they both returned from the original Momo. So uh, obviously, Marias' resume is pretty uh, heavy as far as designer releases. Guishar, um, obviously some pretty good releases too at the same time. So olfactory group of Womo Casual Life, I would have to say this is an aromatic release. Um, I really think that this is more obviously geared for um, spring, um, the warmer climate, and we're gonna get into that. Um, so let's take a look at the note breakdown on this one. Up top we have violet, leaf, lemon, and cardamom. In the mid, uh, we got a little bit of a gourmand tendency. Here we got coffee, uh, we have geranium and ambroxan. And in the back end, we have cashmere wood, white cedar and musk. So obviously the elephant in the room here is one, one of these notes does not belong in this <laughs> breakdown, which is coffee. So we gotta keep an eye on that. Now the key notes to my nose in this particular release are violet leaf, cardamom and cashmere. As all my fragrance reviews go, this is of course my scent of the day. Today I'm swimming in it. I got that dry down actually going strong on my arm here, but we're gonna remind me of the introduction and I'm gonna dissect this one for all of you out there. So let me uh, do a one spray on the back of my hand, one spray for you guys while you're watching. So Womo Casual Life comes off very thin, um, watery, green, a thin scent, honestly. It doesn't have much backbone up top. It really feels like it's going to be a spring and summer scent. So let me paint you a picture. Um, this fragrance, um, just looking at the bottle, looking at you know the marketing and the scent itself, especially up top here, I'm picturing some linen suit action. That's what I'm thinking here. Reminds me of a warmer night in the summer and you want something light to wear casually, but the linen suit's not too casual, but it's not too dressed up either. So like a gray linen suit, just to go with the, of course, the metallic gray look of the bottle. So that's where I'm picturing myself nighttime in the summer at a bar. That's how I feel um, on this fragrance. So in the opening, so in, in a nutshell, uh, they took Womo, they freshened it up. That's what I smell here for warmer weather. Um, end of the review, <laughs> we're, we're done. <laughs> No, it's not that simple on the Robes 08 channel, but let's peel some layers and let's take a look at uh, Womo Casual Life. So let's start with the violet, the violet leaf, since it's a primary note to my nose. Violet leaf always gives a fragrance as a floral, green, watery aspect. This does it. There's a wallop of it in, in Casual Life. It's actually one of the, those notes that um, you can't miss. Um, but it, it really is the primary note in this fragrance up top. This actually, this violet, um, opening reminds me just a bit. It brought my nose to YSL's L'Homme Libre. So, you know, fans of the YSL L'Homme Libre, um, which is obviously axed, um, may want to gravitate towards this one, which is a little easier to find for now. Um, but they both have their own twist uh, to that particular note. Now, this is paired with a slightly tart lemon zest up top, which loses steam quite quickly. However, I would have to say every time I've sprayed this scent up top, that zest impressed me. Beautiful rendition of the lemon, and I actually I wish it stuck around. Now pairing with all that, we have a green sweet cardamom that joins the party, and so does the Ambrox in here. And lo and behold, the original DNA of Womo starts peeking through a bit here. This is where casual life gets interesting as it went from, oh nice, a nice lemon violet combo to a synthetic sweet fresh combo kind of loses me here. Just kind of loses me. This kind of combo like Jean-Paul Gaultier, Pai Pai Edition, Invictus, Aqua, to name a few, is truly a win or lose situation for me. And the wins honestly aren't that big of wins. They're just a slight win. They're more losses than anything. The synthetic sweet marine-like note, the Ambrox, that adds to the violets, at times ruined the scent for me. Honestly, it did. Um, it also has a little bit of a talky, 
powdery aspect that didn't fit well with the overall theme either. So there is some drawbacks in casual life just starting to peek through here. Now there's some gourmand tendency in casual life. They're there, but they're very thin. It feels like it pulls, it feels like this got watered down up to the last drop, basically. There's a coffee note that plays a game here with me every single wearing. Almost like it's playing peekaboo with me, kind of going, hey, I'm a little gourmandish, I'm a little darker, I'm a little different. It comes in and out of the scent. Honestly, as far as coffee notes go, it ain't that good. It, it really isn't that good of a coffee note. Um, again, I, I, I know what I'm going to get out of these Ferragamo Womos. It's not going to be something that is going to be true to life. Um, I really did like the original and the playfulness of it. This one, it feels a little bit out of place. And the synthetic feel of the coffee didn't feel right to me. Now, move it on to the heart and base of this fragrance. So the intro goes from beautiful lemon zest, love it. Violet leaf combo, love that. To showing a poor Ambrox note and a, a fairly poor coffee note with a little bit of a gourmandish quality. Now more into the heart and deeper dry down of this fragrance, it kind of pulls a little bit of the late introduction where you lost your beautiful lemon zest. Um, the violet is still pushing here, but now shares the overall theme with the synthetic aquatic ambrox, a poor coffee note. This scent thickens a bit here from that really thin opening. I know the original is known for that gourmand tiramisu note, and at times in this heart, I felt it had it at an extremely locked down, muffled feel um, from the original. It may be that coffee note that's kind of playing games with me, but I felt it. So I'll say I felt a little punch of the original here, but super minor. They kept it just enough to call it a flanker and maybe make it think that it was, you know, maybe an original idea. Kashmirin comes in and adds another facet in this mid, giving casual life a light woody tone. And also there's a clean musky backbone to the scent. The dry down is very subpar to my nose. And they lost me on hour one of the scent. Honestly, I was just like, mm. the introduction, I was like, ooh, okay, I can feel this. Again, nothing crazy or nothing new in the game, but I feel you with the casual life. They lost me after hour one. There is some redeeming qualities in this fragrance, but overall, a poorly made scent. As the name states, I felt like this scent throws off the casual manner correctly. It, it felt like they wanted to make a mass appealing scent here, but wanted to hang on to the original gourmand tendencies. At times it felt a little edgy, but at most times it just felt a little off, like it, it wasn't really working. So let's get into the ratings of this one. Uh, obviously uniqueness and, and scent. So let's get into uniqueness. Um, uniqueness, it has some unique qualities. I'm gonna give it six bottles out of 10. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of L'Homme Libre from YSL. Um, a lot of people online compare this to Halloween Man X. Um, I've never smelt, actually I don't own any Halloween Man. I should get on that, but uh, some people are comparing it to that, um, which is a cheapie. Scent wise on um, this fragrance, I'm going to give it another six here, six bottles out of 10 for the scent profile, the lemon and the violet leaf. They're the stars of the show. Sadly, you lose the lemon real quick. The violet, of course, sticks around, but there's also many scents that do this. And uh, as far as the secondary notes, I felt they were fairly poor in the dry down. This thing just fizzled. Out. Now let's move on to performance and feedback. Let's get into my sprays. Now, um, usually I do, of course, my usual spray on the chest, one on the chest, two on the neck, so one over here, and then one over here, then two on the arm, so I'll do inner elbows here, and that's it. That's my spray routine, uh, five sprays, and usually that's my usual standard with a lot of fragrances. So now let's move on to longevity projection common factor. We'll start it off with longevity. How long does this thing last on your skin? Um, not long, uh, four bottles out of 10. It's not a complete dud. Um, it gave me a mix of four to six hours, give or take, uh, sometimes a little less than four. Sometimes it pushed a little bit more than six, but really that sweet spot, four to six hours, which for a freshie, it's decent. I, I like better, but it's decent. And that's why I got, it gets four. It's more of a four to five hour thing. Projection, I'm gonna give it another I'm gonna give it five bottles out of 10 on this one. Um, I felt like the projection itself is, is weaker. 
I mean, again, this is not a very good performer, to be quite honest. Again, freshies, you got to keep that in mind. But I felt like this one, even in the high heat, it didn't do anything. In the cold, it didn't push anymore. Um, it just was a poor performer all the way through. As, and that goes to compliment factor on this one. Again, um, some violet leaf based scents do well on my skin. Um, but this one, five bottles out of 10, um, it's a lukewarm uh, fragrance. Um, as far as getting attention and stuff like that, five bottles out of 10, uh, lukewarm reception. So let's move on to the next chapter, that's versatility. So we're gonna talk about age range, seasons, day or night, occasions, and of course a final score to versatility. Let's move on to age range. I feel like this one's for everybody, teens, anybody can really wear this. It's an easy to wear, throw on type of scent. So teens and up. Um, this is that type of kind of fragrance. Uh, versatility is probably going to be super high just because of that. Seasons, I felt this thing shined more in the spring. I felt like it could handle, you know, uh, the different type of temperatures in spring, even if it was a cooler morning, uh, a warmer day, and then or a cooler night, or it had overcast, or it had rain. Actually, it did well. Violet Leaf always does well in rain. Um, I feel like spring, it's his bread and butter. Fall, too. To tweener and summer nights um, that was the sweet spot i really didn't like it in the high heat even though it's a casual life and it has some thinness but it had some thickness in the back end um i really felt like summer nights is where it shine but mostly spring day or night um pick your poison i feel like day but i prefer it on a cooler summer night um but mostly a daytime scent especially during that spring time i feel like this could be someone's signature for spring uh, during the day occasions um what it says on the sticker here casual life it's casual man um office wear yeah for sure just a daily wear workhorse of a fragrance that doesn't break the bank doesn't really stand out in the sea of designers it's just one of those that's just okay and that goes to versatility um it is going to get a very good score these type of okay scents uh you know they're very pleasant easy to wear things like that i'm gonna give it eight bottles out of ten um, it's its best feature in my opinion and just being versatile at times you need a couple of these in your collection but again looking at the overall scheme there's a lot of things that are drawbacks on this one you could find better for the price and that goes to value let's move on to that chapter let's take a look at bottle sizes available um, this one is the 3.4 ounce so I got the big boy but there's also a 1.7 ounce available our pricing um, retail I think USD 65 to 95 dollars uh, definitely can be found on at bargain bins, um, discounters, things like that. So definitely shop around on this one. You can find it for at least half the price. I wouldn't pay more than USD, 50 on this one. I feel like that's the sweet spot for this one. Availability, uh, from as far as I know, it's still available. Uh, presentation, I feel like this is one of the nice, I kind of like this presentation. Um, I, I like the atomizer on these. I like the look of the glass and then it's got the Ferragamo on the side of the bottle it's got ferragamo on on the cap here very nicely done i really do like this one um the the gray look is beautiful so good presentation um the only thing i could really add was maybe you know paint the stem silver just to add a little touch or maybe metallic blue something like that to give it a little pop a uh, pricing versus quality i feel like this one right now as far as the pricing goes i'm gonna give it six bottles out of ten it's fair for discount pricing Retail, forget about it. I, th I feel like that's a, a jip. Um, you're going to get jipped on that. But uh, as far as discounters go, yeah, it's not bad. Six bottles out of ten. So let's uh, let's delve into my final chapter, my final take. So let's take a look at some positives to take away from Womo Casual Life. Um, the lemon is the star of the show. Hands down, um, I, I've put in a little bit of a dent in this one because sometimes I've, I've doubled sprayed. Um, I'd come back to it a couple hours later and just try to get that lemon zest again. That violet leaf, that is the star of the show. And of course, the versatility of this release is something that is good. So let's move on to the negatives. Oh man, this dry down sucked. Plain old sucked. <laughs> it leaves much to be desired. A performance, fairly poor. Um, felt like a weak attempt to, to make a quick buck. You know, I, you know, I haven't talked much about this on my channel. I used to way back in the day and I'd say this fragrance is top heavy. You know, this is one of those. It's top heavy. This is one of those that they're hoping that you're going to spray, you know, the piece of paper and you go, Oh, that introduction. Very nice. And they're going to sell units that way. So my final thoughts on Womo casual life, you already know, you can feel the theme of this review. I prefer the original. I do. This fresher take, in my opinion, did not work for me. Guishaw Morius returned to tweak 
and freshen up Womo here. They succeeded as the familiar DNA is still around, but this one is much fresher. So they, did, they succeeded as far as the plan goes. Unique? Not really. Easy to wear? Oh yeah. Casual? Yeah, yeah, it says what it's, it does what it says on the sticker. Just a scent that isn't that great, isn't that bad. Just an okay release, but something I feel that's gonna get forgotten over the years. It's one of those that I'm not excited about. I never felt the excitement with Casual Life. So my overall score on this one, out of 10, I would have to give Casual Life five bottles out of 10. It's just one of those that's just straight in the middle. It's an okay scent. So as far as my recommendation, Buy, try, or pass, hard pass for me. I really think you can find it better for the price and for what you're looking for. If you're looking for a violet leaf based scent, um, if you're looking for something that's fresh or you're trying to get something for more office use, um, I feel like there's so much better. These, thing, these type of releases are dime a dozen and um, this is one of those fragrances that's okay but I don't think you're, I'm gonna see anybody out there buying five, six backup bottles of this stuff just to continue to wear this. I feel like this is one of those that's just get your one bottle and move on. So that's it, my review on Womo Casual Life. Have you smelt this one? It's your turn to comment below. Let me know what you think about this particular release. Share it with the community. Talking about sharing with the community, I did ask on all my social media, people that do follow me in the back end, right? On Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that. And I asked them what they thought about this fragrance. So I'm going to put all those comments in the back end. I'm going to choose a handful and share with all of you. As always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube. Have a good one.